Hey guys, how's it going? Steven here. So today I'm going to do a little uh, PC update. As you can tell, there's quite a few uh, changes that I've made since the last update video. And I get asked quite a few questions on a couple of things. And in this video, I'm going to go over those. I'm going to have a little diagram. I'm going to show how things, how I have things hooked up. And just kind of go over... Uh, the full PC. So I have a little list here and let's go ahead and get started. So we'll start with the uh, tower. This is the Lee and Lee PC 011 Dynamic. I do have a Cooler Master vertical GPU mount that is holding the GPU. The GPU is an Asus Strix GTX 1080. This is the Baro GPU water block. It is a full cover GPU water block. The CPU is a Intel i7-8700K. The CPU water block is the Bisky water block. It is a full copper water block. It is nickel plated, very good water block. I will also have links for everything down in the description uh, for all the major components. The LEDs inside the GPU water block and the CPU water block, these are three pin, five volt RGB headers. Water block uh, on the CPU and GPU do have those. So does the uh, pump res combo. I just don't have this hooked up, but it does use the three pin header. And those are plugged into my motherboard's RGB header. So that's the three pin five volt, not the four pin 12 volt. So if you guys do by chance pick up one of these, make sure that you do have it plugged into the three pin, not the four pin header. You will destroy the LEDs if you plug it in. How I control the LEDs is through the ASUS motherboard software. That's Aura Sync. And I just have them on a, a pulse right now. That's how those are hooked up. Next, going on, the two radiators that I have in here are Alpha Cool. This is the Alpha Cool XT45. So it's 360 millimeters by 45 millimeters thick. Back there in the back, I have the Alpha Cool ST30. It's a 240 millimeter. Uh, radiator that is 30 millimeters thick. I do have all of it exhausting and I get asked that question a lot. Why are all your fans exhausting? How are you getting um, air inside the case? Well, I do have a little 80 millimeter fan back here and then underneath the case down here, it's kind of hard to see, on the bottom I have 220 millimeter fans mounted that are actually pushing air up into here. The uh, i7 that I have in there is uh, de-litted. It does have liquid metal on it using the, this is called the, the Rocket 88 de-lid and re-lid tool. I highly recommend this tool. It was a breeze to do. Super, super simple. It's about 35 bucks on Amazon and uh, I couldn't recommend this guy enough. So going on, uh, this is the Swiftec Maelstrom. It's the version two. It's 100 millimeter. I'm not exactly sure what the uh, capacity is of the reservoir, but it, this is a pretty big um, pump res combo. I really, really do like this. Uh, it's got the Lang D5 pump in it. Really, really nice pump res combo. Excess uh, PC compression fittings. These are the triple O-ring fittings. Highly recommend those as well. Once they, once the tubing is inside the fittings, it is extremely hard to get it off. The elbows and other fittings are all alpha cool. The tubing is PETG. It is 14 millimeter outer diameter and 10 millimeter inner diameter. Very forgiving tubing. I highly recommend this tubing as well. I've had this going for about four months now I want to say and I did take the system apart the other day to do some wiring back here I took this out rinsed it out and there was no type of staining 
no discoloring inside the tubing. The liquid that I'm using inside here, I have the EK Cryofuel Solid Scarlet Red. This is the premix. It's a liter. Was plenty enough to do this full loop. Recommend that stuff. Oh, it's kept my PC nice and cool. Has not stained anything. There has not been any type of corrosion inside the micro channels. Really good stuff. Going on, this is the Asus Maximus Xcode motherboard. It's a Z370. For hard drives, I have a Samsung 970 Evo NVMe M.2 SSD. That's a one terabyte. And then I do have a Samsung 250. Uh, it's the 860 Evo. That's 250 gigs. And last, I have a Western Digital one terabyte regular hard drive just for some backup files. For RAM, I have the Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. That's 32 gigabytes at 3200 megahertz. Really like this RAM. There's quite a few different effects. Next going on, we'll go over the fans. So another big question I get asked a lot is, how do I have seven fans hooked up inside the system? Now keep in mind with Corsair and the IQ software, there's the Commander Pro, there's the RGB Fan Hub, and then there's the Lighting Node Pro, okay? So I have the Commander Pro, the RGB Fan Hub, and the Lighting Node Pro. The fans, there's seven. The RGB Fan Hub for the fans only allows six fans to be plugged in. Now, if I had, say, eight, ten fans, I would get a second fan hub, RGB fan hub. These two last fans, so this is fan seven and this is fan six, I have these daisy chained to each other. And as you'll see here in a minute, the diagram, I'll show you how I have everything hooked up, and hopefully it'll help you guys out. With the IQ software, you have to go in sequential order. So you can go fan one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. So if you do not have them plugged into sequential order, they will not, if you have a different type of setting, they will not go in order. So I could do it either way. I could do it fan one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like that. If you only had just three fans, you could do one, two, three, one, two, three. You just can't go, fan one, fan three, fan two. They wouldn't go in sequential order, they'd kind of hop around. So I'll go ahead and show you here really quick what I mean by sequential order. So just really quick, as you can see how the fan lighting is going, like that. So if I had them plugged in and they were not in order, they would not be able to do that. So that's what I mean by sequential order. Uh, now I just kind of have it on demo mode right now. Next thing we'll go over are the lights that I have in here. So these are different lights that I bought off of Amazon. The regular Corsair light kit, it comes with LED strips that have 10 LEDs in it per strip. So the Commander Pro, the Lighting Node Pro, and the RGB Fan Hub can each take six strips or six fans. So a maximum you can have is six strips of LEDs per LED channel. Hope I'm not losing you. So the Corsair strips, they come 10 LEDs per strip. Well, those LEDs are not very bright. Don't really like the function of them. So I got these off of Amazon. Uh, like I said, I'll have a link down below. These are very, very bright LEDs and it is 60 LEDs in this strip. So in the IQ software, I have this set up as six strips. So this comes in, I believe, 100 LEDs in this strip. So what I did was I cut it down to where it's only 60 LEDs and it's set up as stri six strips. Just like on the bottom here, this is 20 LEDs. It's actually one long strip 20 LEDs, but I have it set inside the IQ software as two strips, okay? So if I had this with 70 LEDs on it, the last 10 LEDs on the strip would not light up because the software will not recognize those last 10. 
So I hope I kind of answered a couple of your guys' questions with, as in regard to how I have my system set up. Next thing I'm going to show you guys is some of my CPU temperatures with this. The CPU delitting, putting liquid metal in, dropped my uh, temperatures substantially. So I'm going to do a CPU Cinebench and then we'll do a 3D mark on the GPU and you can check out my temps. And that's with doing liquid metal, having a custom loop, and how I have my fans set up and how the system is. I will put the side panel back on. I just have it open for the sake of this video. Like I said, hope that has helped you guys. Let's go ahead and do the uh, benchmarks real quick. And then if you have any comments, questions, anything like that, please leave them down below. I'll be more than happy to get back to you guys, answer any questions that you have. And I'll have some more videos coming out soon. Thanks, guys. All right, so running 3D Mark, Fire Strike. There's temps. You can see GPU temp is there. I'll show you on the ASUS software. So right now we're running at 42 with a max of 43. That's Celsius. There you go, and that's about where it will stay at. So even when gaming, I don't see it go over 45 degrees Celsius. All right, so I'm gonna run an A to 64 stability test. So there we go, let's go ahead and start. So you can see here, CPU, and this is about where the CPU will stay, um, and that's pushing it 100%. It stays between 60 and 65 degrees Celsius, and before, when um, I didn't have the CPU deleted, this would get up to about 85, so... Uh, that's where it will stay. So we can stop this really quick. We can open up Cinebench. Let's do a Cinebench run. And, and there you can see what the uh, CPU temps are like as well. So guys, hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, like I said, if you have any questions, comments, anything, please feel free to uh, leave them down below. Thanks for watching, catch you next time.